once you have recognized what this game of evolution is about, the evolution of God away from God and back to God, once you understand what you're doing here on earth, the meaning of your every act starts to change. And pretty soon your whole life is designed towards awakening because you understand that only in your own liberation from your attachments and clingings, not your responsibilities or your incarnation or your love, but from the clinging and grabbing, that only in that freedom lies the cessation of suffering. And it's only when you do as Christ admonished you to know the Father, not talk about him, not just pray to him, but open yourself to become it. Only then does the whole thing fall into place. And there's nothing else to do. There isn't any other game in town. There's nothing you can offer me that holds a candle to this process. And in order to go this journey, you finally demand of yourself the discipline of body, heart, and mind. The quiet mind, that's why you meditate. The open heart, that's why you practice devotion. The strong body, that's why you concern yourself with your diet and your way in which you keep your body and maintain it. Because when the spirit of the Spirit of God enters you. You have to be able to withstand the power and the intensity of love, the brightness, the blinding brightness that would wither you were you not prepared. And all of yoga is the preparation to in truth become the bride of God. That's what it's about. That's what your births are about. That's what this life is about. And only you know in your heart what you have to do because the spirit speaks through your innermost being. It doesn't speak through some guy up here. I'm speaking, you are hearing, each of you is hearing a different thing that you need to hear. It is not for you to hear what I hear, it is for you to hear what you need to hear. For the simple rules of this game are listen to your innermost voice no matter what anybody tells you about how it ought to be. If this sounds like baloney, it's baloney. If it sounds clear and in harmony with your inner being, you tune to it. The minute there's a vibration in me that doesn't feel right, trust your heart, don't trust me. You trust your own inner voice. You may make many errors trusting your inner voice by hearing the wrong voice. There are thousands of voices. Your ego will constantly mask itself as your spirit and saying, listen to me. Go out and get as much as you can. And you go out and you suddenly feel it's not quite right and listen. There's nothing wrong with falling on your face if you just get up, brush yourself off and get on with it. If you spend all this time in unworthiness and guilt because of all the stuff you've done that's gone against that inner voice in you, and this isn't man's morality now, you're just making choice after choice to go further away from God. Give up the guilt, give up the unworthiness, give up the self-pity, give up the anger, give up the greed, give up the lust, and every time you meet it again, give it up again. Here, Christ, you take it. That's what he went on the cross for, to take that stuff from you. That's what Kali is there for in the Hindu tradition, to take that stuff from you. That's what the guru is there for, to take it from you. But you've got to want to give it up. You get to the point in this game where everything in you that is keeping you from getting home, you say, forget it. You're looking at a map and every side road, no matter how pretty the mountains, if it's not getting you home, it doesn't interest you anymore. First rule, listen to your inner voice. The second rule, be honest with yourself. The predicament is that you get, you listen to your inner voice and it leads you to a path and then you outgrow it and you don't want to admit you've outgrown it because you made a big investment in it. And you must be willing to stand naked as a newborn child again and again and again and again and again and again. The name of this game is surrender. 
surrender of who you think you are and where you think it all is over and over again because what you see from a thousand feet is not what you see from two thousand feet and what you see from three thousand feet truth and trust truth and trust and that trust in your inner voice is based on the faith that there is a divine law which guides you of which you are part when you look up when you say God know me God help me free me God help me that action of raising a hand of reaching out that's man's will is what elicits grace and grace is all of the beings on other planes or on this plane who are there only specifically to liberate you but they are not living in time and there's no rush from where they're sitting so they're not going to come get you you got to initiate the action every morning at four buddha would look out over all the buddha fields to see who was ready for enlightenment who was ready christ says with two or more are gathered in my name there i am you got to call me then i come that's the grace the grace is drawn by you and it's by you saying i see my predicament i want to get out help me not with self-pity but i'm ready to be counted i am ready to stand naked before god i am ready to come to the father i am ready now i am ready to convert my life so the whole process is one of awakening i am ready i will lose myself a thousand times into lust greed doubt fear anxiety etc and a thousand and one times i will awaken and get up and i won't waste time in guilt and shame i'll just get on with it that's the secret of the whole game